breakthrough was how to get away from wind generators at spin. Everyone up till now has been trying to shrink turbines. I first started thinking about this in middle school and first saw the Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse. It's the bridge that starts to shake and wobble. The effect is known as aeroelastic flutter. You can think of it kind of like the bow of a musical instrument, the bow of a violin. When air blows across the surface, it starts to vibrate with the wind at a pretty high frequency. So this is the first approach that uses flutter. You need a way to convert the power in flowing air or wind into the movement of something else. This involves just a few components. You have tension membrane or belt. Think of this kind of as a flexible lever. The second thing you need is a way to convert that motion into electricity. That leverage moves this button magnet. We've designed some very simple cost a quarter kind of power conditioning units. There's nothing really too special about the material. Mylar coated taffeta. This is actually a kite making material. There's enough here for hundreds of wind belts. It was originally designed to address rural lighting in Haiti, thinking how can you make a wind generator for two to five dollars with turbine technology? It was impossible. When you shrink turbines, you have to contend with slick, expensive bearings. We can get 10 times the efficiency because there's no bearings in the wind belt at all. Also turned out that there is just no micro wind options on the market at all. Imagine if wind power is 10 times cheaper than it is now. You can imagine a totally different way of looking at macro size wind power. Strips of material that span a gap, you know, a valley. Just have those under a high tension and you can cull the energy out of the wind. Harder problems make for better inventions. Those problems force you to think in a new way and can yield new inventions that can serve the whole world, not just developing countries. London is